And so my clock shows three. Um, so I guess we can go ahead and get started. Um, so hello, everyone. Um, I'm glad to see everyone. Um, and I hope you all had a great holiday. So um, I hosted both Thanksgiving and Christmas at my house this year for the first time. So that was Wow. That was, that was an experience. <laughs> um, I, it was a good experience, but it was an experience. So, um, yeah, but I hope everybody had a good holiday. So, um, like I was saying, uh, we are recording these meetings now. So just a reminder that that's happening. Um, and also so that if you, if you miss a meeting and you want to go back and rewatch it or rewatch a presentation, um, the links are, um, I started putting them at the bottom of the agenda pages. So I think we have back till September, I think we have. So if you want to go back, rewatch any of those. Um, okay, and the next thing is we are actually going to switch up our normal like agenda format where we start with the bugs and um, I am going to ask Mary to present first, which I cleared with her first. I'm not springing it on her. Um, <laughs> and um, because since we do have so many bugs, um, I don't want to like cut her presentation short. So, um, so Mary will present first first. And after that, we can look at the bugs and just open it up for general discussion. For I'll whatever. try not to take too, take too long. So you've got room for your bugs. <laughs> You're good. You're good. <laughs> um, so, okay, so with that, um, so Mary Llewellyn from Bibliomation, she is going to talk to us today about troubleshooting mark uploads in acquisition. All right, here we All go. Right. Huzzah. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. I have a little Zoom experience too. <laughs> All right, can everybody see the, the um, opening slide? Okay. And if I change it to slideshow, can you still see it? Yes. Okay, we're good. Okay, um, as of my subtitle here notice, notice says, um, this is about bibliomation practices. So I just want you to keep in mind that your mileage may vary about some of the things that I, this, I it comes from a document I wrote for our librarians. So um, our, consortium practice may be different from yours. So just keep that in mind. So the first thing I have is um, I get an error message when I try to upload the order. And the error message says about event, database query failed, the attempt to query the database failed. And from my experience with my librarians, when they run into this, it's usually because you see the provider record is empty. They skipped it. So that's why I say, take a look at your provider field. Odds are you skipped it. So click OK to make the error message go away. Click the refresh button at the top of the screen and set up your load again, this with this time with your provider field filled in. So that's been, like I'd say, one of the more frequent uh, problems we've run into. And then the, another one about beginning an error message during the upload. This one says the file, there's a file upload error. And if you see down at the bottom, um, no file was chosen. So someone hit upload without picking the file. So that's that's an easy thing to do. You get caught up in what you're doing and you just uh, bypass that. So again, click OK, refresh it, set up again, and this time make sure you get a file in. This one is our most frequent situation. Um, my load just keeps running and never seems to end. And what that means is they never get those link at the end that says, you know, uh, get provided the link to the purchase order or the selection list or the bib queue. So it just runs and runs and runs. So when we were in Zool, we used the convenience of uh, in my selection list. I would tell them open up a new tab and click on my selection list and then open the list and have a look. Now, since we've got the Angular searching, it's a whole lot easier to search for purchase orders than it used to be. So I'm trying to steer them along that road now. So I suggest to search them to search for purchase order creation time and stay within one day, or you could pick a specific date. And I would save this as their default search. They don't have to set it up again and again. So that should make your life easier. 
And so then you see they get a list of um, purchase orders that match. And so you find the, the one that you were looking for. And when you get there, if you look at under on each of the line items, some say catalog and some say link to catalog. And this is an indication that the loader is still running. It hasn't finished performing bibliographic record uh, matching and loading to our database. So um, my recommendation in that case is to um, wait a little while longer, then refresh on uh, the purchase order and look until all the line items say catalog and then your load is finished and then you can proceed. Um, oh, that's a different one. Uh, so you can proceed with whatever you do you know, for your, your um, activities for activating the purchase order. This other one, um, I don't think it's happening as often. In our live database, I couldn't replicate it, but in our test database, I was able to see it again. The uh, load finished, but all the line items say linked to catalog. It's not like the mixture I, I had in the previous question. So what happened probably was that they didn't fill in a, a new queue name. And so the, the bib processing can't happen unless there's a bib queue to, to work with. So one clue here is you see, Vandalay records process zero, bib records merged, imported zero. So nothing, nothing happened with the bib part. So another clue is when you get to the purchase order, there is no link to the queue on each line item. So the recommendation for us is don't panic. You get another shot at creating a queue name. Um, with our libraries, they upload without a fund. It's just, it's a long story, but that's how we work. Um, so I tell them to apply their fund to all the line items and click the activate order button as you normally would. And then what they'll get is what a screen that looks like the bottom half of the uh, vendor mark loader screen. And here's the, another shot at entering a queue name. So enter a queue name and click submit. And this time the line items will say catalog and they will have the status of on order and your bibs and items will appear in the catalog. Next question we get is, when I try to activate my purchase order, the system hangs. And I learned this through trial and error. If you click on expand all and look at all the line items, you may find at least one that doesn't have the branch filled in. I'm not sure why, I'm not sure if it was something they did or didn't do uh, on the, the vendor's website whenever they were um, working with their cart that didn't pick up the, the branch information. So um, what I tell them is to go click on the copies link. So over here, the copies link for that line item. And at the copy level, you enter your owning branch. And what I find what frequently will happen is when you get go to that screen, the owning branch will get filled in. So all you have to do is to click save changes and click return and then um, repeat as needed because I've had libraries where this has happened on more than one line. And then when they're done, they apply the fund to all the line items and they activate as they normally do. So that, that definitely helps against the hanging. Um, next one, after I loaded my file, the purchase order didn't have any copies on it and it should have what went wrong. And usually what happened there was the mark file didn't have any tags with the order uh, copy information in it. Uh, in our system, we use the tag 970 and we have subfields defined. And if they didn't um, uh, apply their profile that we have set up for them on title source or their uh, grid in Ingram to the selection list, then it's coming in without the order information and the system doesn't know what to do with it. The uh, alternate problem could have been that they created a new vendor record and I always have them contact me. So I'll add the 970 tag and the subfield definitions to their vendor record. And if they didn't tell me and they just went ahead and loaded, then the system doesn't know what to do with this tag that came in. So um, yeah, here's, here's what um, 
our tags look like, or, and the vendor record, we have a provider record, 970 tag, and then we have the subfields defined this way. So on the, uh, the vendor side, I have a, like a mark profile set up that just defines this subfield should have this value when it's coming in. And um, so it's a little bit, you know, fiddly on when you're first setting up. But once it's done, it works pretty well. So um, the good news is they can still use that purchase order. So if it's a big file, it's going to take a little work. So on the purchase order screen, I tell them to click on this, the link next to um, uh, check item, oh, yeah, line items. So check, mark that check so that all the items, line items are selected. And then um, if you're going to use, my, def, my recommendations are like quantity ordered one, I said you can end, edit individual lines if you ordered more copies of some titles. Enter your branch code, enter what you fund. And then in our system, we use a generic um, location called acquisitions of a capital A and a circ modifier of a small a. So nobody has to think about how to catalog things before. And it also makes it clearer to the public staff and the patrons that this is a theoretical item. It's not, uh, it's on order. So um, it, it, there'll be a series of boxes. I've, unfortunately, I cut those off, but a series of, of boxes that you would um, to you know, pick out of your drop down of what you want to use, and then there's the apply selected button. And then, but even after you've done that, you still have to manually enter the prices. There's no, unfortunately, there's no batch way to just magically say, okay, put this price in all these fields. You have to go one field at a time. And if it's a big order, it's going to take a while, but you know, if you persevere, it can be done. And then you can activate the purchase orders when all the lines have the prices entered. Next question, uh, the bibs, bib records for my order in the catalog, but I don't see my on order items. Well, several possibilities of why this could have happened. So I tell them, check, do the line items in the purchase order show they have any copies? And if they, the number entry after copies says zero, means there were no copies to go back to the, the uh, my previous question and, and follow through there. Did you activate the purchase order yet? Believe it or not, like that could be an overlooked step. Uh, once, if you haven't, then once you activate the copies are going to appear once that's been done. If there are copies for each line item and the purchase order has been activated, then this, I've run into this once or twice. They lost their minds and clicked on activate without creating items and the system did what it was told. So there's no way to undo this and try again, because once it's activated, as far as I know, you can't deactivate it and activate it again. So you've got a choice. You can create items manually, and they're not going to be linked to the line items. Or what? Um, since most of our libraries don't transmit their orders via EDI, then it's just as easy to just cancel that order and load the file again, this time clicking on the correct activate button. And um, then you'll have a new PO, and, but the items that are generated will be linked to that purchase order. There was one more I thought of after I created my slideshow that we've run into, and it's very rare, but it, it's plus me fits whenever it has occurred, is something happened to the bib record between the time of the records were loaded and at the time it was activated. And that was the, the, the bib record got deleted somehow. And so when you try to activate it, it it's can't link itself to the bib record, but also doesn't generate a new bib record. So that's a little tricky for me to track down, undelete the bib record and then try again. So as like I said, some of this is, is uh, specific to bibliomation. Um, our practices, but I hope you know you, there'll be something there that might do somebody some good. So I'm done. Tiffany, can I All ask done. Mary a question? Uh huh. Sure. 
So Mary, I think you might have the answer to some problems we're encountering recently in um, Onslow, North Carolina with uh -huh. our library system. We're having orders that will, the, the uh, use services librarian is uploading her mark order records just fine. Mm -hmm. They say activatable, but when she mm -hmm. activates the order, they never activate. And we're seeing, if you don't mind going back in your slideshow, I just wanted to go back. You might have my answer. Um, when she goes to activate them, it's loading that partial screen of where you're first creating a PO. What causes that again? Can you go, do you mind going back with me? And uh, let's see which one. Okay. It was one of your slides further yeah, up. Uh, We've just started encountering this problem where the okay. mark order records are loading perfectly fine and the mm -hmm. order says activatable, but they're not activating. Okay. And I've, um, I've even uh, opened the mark files with mark edit just to make sure all the grid came over correctly and it okay. did, so I can't figure out why. Okay, I'll see. I lost my, my place. Um, that's a case where I would click on um, expand all and look at what's going on at the copy level. And if there's even one copy where the branch is missing, you're you're dead in the water. See what I'm okay. here it is. So yeah, that was some, it. Some of the, okay, the branch was is filled in in some and not on others. Okay, how about further up, a little closer to the beginning of your slide presentation? You showed okay. right. Hold on, it might have been it. Okay. Go well, back up. Back to I'm the going top. Up. I'm going to the tippity top. Oh, you're on 21. Go back up. Because I okay, spotted I... it. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Stop there. This oh, one? Go back. You said there. You this one has had one... a search. This is one that just had a search. I'm time. sorry. Well, then okay. I'll describe the slide if you don't mind. Okay. Sure. It was a slide where you said you may have the orders. Um, the mark order records already uploaded and when you go to activate a partial upload mark order screen will appear. Do you remember that slide? Yes, or did this you one here. Yes. Okay, what? Okay, so you have a lot more experience with Evergreen than okay, I do. So see how what normal, would cause that? Okay, if you see how in a normal one you get this link that says Q, mm -hmm. if you get to your, your purchase order and you don't see Q, and instead when you try to activate, you get um, this screen here, um, it means somebody didn't enter a bib queue name and you get a okay. shot at doing that. Okay, so they didn't order the bib queue name when they first loaded the purchase order right. mark records. Yeah, it, it was probably like this. There was no bib queue name entered here. They just went for it. Okay, that's that what that the... happened. That's happened a lot in our libraries. And I'm, oh, I've got okay. like a, a form I can send back to them and say, this needs to be filled in. Okay, because I'm so, actually looking at one right now in my mm -hmm. um, Evergreen that has the queue written there. And I'm also looking at a purchase order that wouldn't activate last night for our youth services librarian. And some of the items have the link, say catalog with the hyperlink, and some say link to catalog. What would cause a PO to have a combination of catalog and link to catalog? Usually, um, if it's a combination with us it means it was still running but if if not if that's not it I would click expand all and look at the copy level information and see that everything was filled in that you've got a branch at least and if yeah, you've got I any do. I'm sorry I, I wish I was here we are hmm. present, I'm presenting as if I was the expert I'm just sharing what we think. No, thank you. So. You're, actually, no, your tidbits on the one helped because I think maybe the queue, like I was confused. I had never seen because of my lack of mm -hmm. experience where mm -hmm. you go to activate an existing mm -hmm. purchase order. I had never seen at the bottom of the activate screen, it give you the original load mark order records right. before. When I had this never comes seen up, that. There was definitely, uh, it's asking for a queue. Okay. So, you give it a cue, fingers crossed that that will solve your problem. Okay. Deborah, uh, uh, yes. You, you can also try, um, sometimes when I get where it seems like it's just like partially done and I can't figure uh -huh. out why, 
Um, okay. If it does have the link to the queue, you can click on that and it'll take you like directly to the queue and it'll tell you if some of them just like errored out, you know, like it, it processed mm. one, two, and three, but there was an uh -huh. error on four. It processed five, six, and seven, but there was an error on eight. Um, sometimes if there's not uh -huh. a lot of them, you can like force it, be like reprocess these ones that erred. Um, but I mean, that's like if there was one or two errors, you know, like if the whole thing is messed up, then, then yeah, like Mary said, it, you, you just have to do. Um, so uh, click on the queue. I don't think I've actually ever read, looked at that. Yeah, that, that, this queue link will take you to the bid queue. And I yeah. try to get my librarians to always use a, a different, a unique queue name every time they do mm -hmm. it. So we're right. not looking through, you know, thousands of compiled queues. Um, so if, like, if you have one that's only the same number of titles as you have in the PO, then you, that's a good start. And then you can go in there. Um, I don't know, can you edit on the, in the, the mark record on the queue and then try to force the load there? Does that work? I'm not sure, I've never tried that. That's an interesting idea though. <laughs> So if I'm looking at a queue summary and I'm looking at the one that our, my youth mm -hmm. services librarian told me failed last night, I've got records in the queue 24, records imported 10, record import failures 14. Wow. Yeah, I would definitely, I would recommend what, um, what she said to, to go to the queue and see if there's like a uh, load errors next to the titles that might help give you some guidance on what's wrong. Okay. You know, there's some kind of um, mark invalid coding that's that's caused it or something. Yeah, I'm gonna have to figure out what our e services librarian's doing differently because our adult services librarian is not having any issue of these issues. Yeah, so. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And if it's only a few, you can do a manual link to catalog from the purchase order. You click on that link to catalog and it opens up. It'll It'll search your your local catalog, and if it finds a match, then you can say, "Okay, link to this." I don't know what to tell you if there if there's no match, then you're you're back to struggling. So you've got yeah, things. you've got to have it matched to something in the catalog. I'm wondering if some of the oh. errors also are possibly trying to order something where I'm in a consortium and maybe since if they're replacements, maybe the bib record's been deleted. Does that cause any issues? I guess be... I've mentioned there. I didn't have a slide for it because it occurred to me afterwards. Um, right. Yeah, so if the bib record got deleted between the time of the load and the the time of activation, you're going to run into a trouble. Yeah, because we're in a consortium and environment. It'll, it'll hang, sit and hang, and right. you'll be like, why? And, and that, it's, in our system, it, that's very rare to happen. So I, once I discovered it was a deleted bib, then I just went and undeleted it and tried again, and we were good. We were good. Because we very much do our stuff EDI back to Baker and Taylor, so. Mm hmm Okay. Our, yeah, we have two libraries using EDI and one I'm not sure why they do the other one does because they want to get the electronic invoicing there are five branch systems so it streamlines their workflow but the rest of them will just do their work do their their carts on title source then submit the order and then download the cart so whatever um we're loading it's 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 not going to be affected by what happened on the title source side so like i said if you if you they had to um cancel a purchase order it doesn't cancel the order with with baker and taylor it just cleans things up so they can try again in our system okay so to go back over this i'm looking at the one that didn't work to anybody out there tiffany or mary if it has catalog then it's correctly linked if it says link to catalog yeah. i've got to fix those links to catalog right you gotta, yeah you've got to fix well because it's not fun when you click on link to catalog it's not finding anything right but if it depends on the situation if it's you know bad mark records that you're finding on the queue then uh -huh. um that's one situation you you might be able to fix them in your queue and then try uh, just importing them and see if that will help then on the on the acquisition side. 
that, does that make any sense? I know you said you hadn't tried it, but I, I'm, this is ringing a bell with me. I might have done this once. <laughs> okay. Well, I've got some homework so after this meeting. So this was the per perfect presentation for me. So thank you. You're <laughs> um, I will say there's, um, and Jennifer linked it in the um, the chat. Thank you, Jennifer. I literally stared right at it and couldn't find it. Um, but on on the uh, the wiki for reports, um, uh -huh. have a report to find um, line items that are linked to deleted bib records. So. Um, we have one at Pines, and I think it's not exactly the same, but it's pretty close. Um, where is the filters? Let me let me share my screen real quick. Hold on, so you guys don't just hear yeah, me. Yeah, stop sharing. So it's a screen okay. clear. <laughs> okay. All right. Can you guys see my screen? Yep. Okay. Cool. Um, so, what do you put in here? Oh, okay. So this is don't. defined on any purchase order if there's. Um, any uh, any light items that are linked to deleted bibs. So you can use this to find out if that's the problem. Tiffany, okay. I don't think that's the one because that you. said invoice not received. You're right. You're right. It's not. It's not. Yeah, I've never tried running a report on because it's usually very contained within one purchase order and I can uh, poke okay. around and, and find it myself where, where the trouble bib record is. Okay, so this is put your ordering agency in, uh, the bib is deleted, and put in the name of your PO, and it'll mm -hmm. find if there's any line items that match. Is that right, Jennifer? Yeah. Okay, cool. And we, we don't have to use that report very often anymore, I don't think, because we're currently running 3.9. And mm -hmm. there's been some recent fixes, not entirely sure which versions they made it into off the top of my head, um, but there's been some fixes to prevent the leading bibs when line items are attached. Um, I think there's still at least one outstanding one where there's one way you can do it. Um, but there was a bug fix for the most common way that people deleted it. Yeah, so the I've problem tried gets to, better. <laughs> I, I've taken or uh, turned off the library setting that automatically deletes an item from a catalog when an item is canceled. Because, or I, no, I take it back. It still allows the item to be deleted, but I've turned off where it automatically deletes the bib record. Because I can't tell you how many times I go to um load bib records to replace vendor records i'm like we already had this and it turned out that they had deleted something and it, the bib record deleted itself and now i had to resurrect it and merge it with the vendor record and it's kind of a pain so i i, I tr try to discourage them from going and deleting the item through cataloging because that will delete the bib record in our system so um yeah, so, that, that was my solution is that when you cancel, it deletes the item and I didn't want the item deletion to delete the bib record like it does in cataloging. So I turned that off. And that's the piece that still um, uh, that's still outstanding. Um, if that if that setting that you're talking about is either unset or set to false. Mm -hmm. um bibs are deleted even if they're attached to open line items and i've just put the bug okay in the yeah. chat um, don't want that. <laughs> there was a fix from rogan to prevent uh staff from specifically like manually going in and deleting a bib record if it has a line item attached and oh apparently that made it into 3.4 okay uh, something I'm looking forward to in 3.10 is the, the new interface for um, for uploading. Some of the fields are uh, required, and they're not going to be able to do uploads skipping the provider or skipping uh, the queue or skipping uh, 
picking a file to load. So I'm looking forward to that. I think we're all looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> Be able to wipe out half of my presentation after that. You know, we're we're going live with three ten like this weekend. So I'm I'm scared. I'm hoping it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what's I gonna say? Well, oh, wishing you all the best luck with that, Tiffany. Yeah, yep. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a little scared. Right, normally on upgrades, like nothing much changes with the acquisition. So I'm just like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, you guys stress. But no, this time I am the stress. I am just they're like Tiffany, you need to bring it down. So I am just on this one. <laughs> just just I can't remember, does three ten also include the new interface for the purchase orders? It does. Selection list? Okay. Yeah does <laughs> yeah that's gonna be a re-education process yeah. for my libraries <laughs> yeah it is so <laughs> i am positive because uh, of the and we'll talk about it in a bug in a second but the batch updater is not on the main page anymore i am positive i have laid money on it that somebody is going to ask me where's the batch updater <laughs> so but yeah um, um yeah i thought i had had uh addressed that when we were testing it we were, it wasn't allowing me to um, batch apply to items. It was only letting me like create new act items. I'm like, I don't need that. I need to fix what we bloated. Yeah, yeah, they've got like both options now, but they're both up in the action menu. So I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, okay, well, I guess, but. <laughs> okay, um, so I'm, I thought I had seen it, it had been put back, but I forgot exactly where it had been structured. So that's, that was like a uh, deal breaker for me. It's like, since we we don't load the fund, it was imperative we'd be able to batch apply the fund to all the line items after the PO was created. So yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> now the reason we don't uh, load the fund is way back when you couldn't ident you couldn't tell it what uh, fiscal year to apply to. It. This way back, like. Um, when we first migrated in like 2011. And then after a discussion with the, the local baker and tailor rep, he said, well, this means, you know, if you're gonna be, I create profiles that, that put things in, but obviously I didn't want to put a profile setting for the fund um, when it was like flat and everything gets this. So he says, if you're gonna be, you know, doing a flat profile and everything gets put in the same way, then they don't need the grids which costs the money. So I'm like, super. So we did away with grids for almost all of our libraries and just said, use this profile. And it plugs in the, the shelf location and the call number and um, uh, the branch code and all that. But the thing we left out then, because it had been a variable, was the fund. So we said, just now that you've got your purchase order, select everything, apply your fund, and then you can activate. And uh, that's been working okay for us in what, 10 years or more and more. Once in a while, I'll get a, li a librarian who isn't good at reading what it says up top and she can't figure out why she can't activate. And it's saying there's no fun. And it's you know, trying to tell you, go fly your fun first, but it's not very uh, human language when it says that. But so that's, that's why we ended up on the road for And before I forget, um, darn it, I forgot it. I was, I was saying it. Oh, I remember. Um, so we were talking about the the queue earlier, Deborah. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So yes, uh, I have just like silly little ones or whatever. But what you could try is, um, and I don't have any errors or anything. But you mm -hmm. could check this box that says records with import errors, and so it like makes the list a lot shorter if it's long. And then mm -hmm. if you select everything, you can try and be like import selected records. So like if if for some reason like your processing just stalled out, you know, like for some reason that was not out of your control, something like on the server or something, mm -hmm. um, and they would still import fine if you forced it. You could try that mm -hmm. and do that. Trust okay. on Good one idea. Of the titles. Um, do what? Just click on one of the titles. Okay. Double click on it and that okay. should open up. So this is where I was wondering if you could edit the record, fix it, and then try importing it after you fixed it. That would uh, help. 
Yeah, I'm gonna try that too. Like, does it tell you? Do these tell you why they fail? Uh, yeah, if I don't you have double click error. on it again, if you double click on it again, then you look at. Oh no, that's that's import items. That's not that doesn't help you. Yeah, I mean, mine's just like a like a little fakey thing. So, but yeah. I mean, like when you're yeah. really looking at them for real, um, maybe that is maybe that would help. There will be a red message about a, a a record error, but it may not be specific in telling you what's wrong with it. That's sort so of you really, can find you the records. Mark, with... Yeah, you have to sort of rely on your mark skills to recognize what could be wrong. So you can find the records with import errors, but it may not tell you what the import error was. Right. Is that what you're saying by that little checkbox? Right. But you yeah. can get in there to edit it if and if you can eyeball it and recognize, oh, that doesn't look right. You know, that you could try fixing it. And I, gotcha. I, I'm not sure. You know, uh, if you save it. I don't know if you can imp, you know, import selected record at that point, if that will work or not. I'm I'm kind of on the thin ice here trying to to um, recommend or not. But it's something yeah. to try. Yeah, that would be just be something to try. Just that this box exists <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, then you can click, you know, what what's left and try and import it by like mm -hmm. just then or if you, if it tells you what the problem is, you know, maybe try and fix it there, but at least you can look at why they, why it stopped. So, mm -hmm. cause I had, I, and it doesn't happen very often for me. I think it's happened maybe like, I don't know, a handful of times where just like it stopped processing, like nothing was wrong. Once I restarted them all, it was okay. The um, hamster got tired. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, so I, I don't know why. Um, they imported fine, but I mean, maybe that's it. So, but it's something to try. So I just wanted to mm -hmm. show you that's what I was talking about. Right. Perfect. Thank awesome you for the stuff. tips. <laughs> yeah, sure. And I gave a copy of my slides to Tiffany. So if you want to post them somewhere. Yeah, I can post them um, on the on the wiki for this. Yeah, I think this I gave you a PDF version, wasn't it? Uh, that sounds right. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me make myself a note, otherwise I'll forget. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Pause, Mary, slide. Okay, cool. All right, awesome. Thank you, Mary. Does anybody else have any questions for Mary or anything about like her presentation or loading records or anything before we go to other stuff? That was great, thank you. You're welcome. Deep side of relief and then next Tuesday I'm co-presenting uh some functions about mark edit at the catalogers meeting so oh I'm really looking forward to that one <laughs> like I, I mostly just use mark edit just for like looking right now so I'm really looking for your, forward to your presentation <laughs> <laughs> well I've, I've I've got some files set aside for different you know to be used for different functions um uh, there's one function that um I'm going to be using fairly soon for a, a incoming library is that they don't have any mark records, but they're compiling an Excel sheet. So I've, I've figured out how you use that with mark edit to create brief mark records. So fingers crossed on that. Ooh, fancy. Okay, very cool. <laughs> Look forward to that. Okay. All right. So then let's talk bugs. Um, let me figure out where is my stuff here. Do, do, do. Um, no, that's not in here. Up, 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 up. Minutes. Down we go. Okay, cool. Uh, so obviously, since we didn't meet in December, we have a veritable pile of bugs <laughs> with activity since the last time we met. Um, Real infestation. So, <laughs> do what? <laughs> An infestation. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so. I'm not going to go through every single one, otherwise we'll be here for like two hours. Um, I'm going to call out a couple that I think are particularly notable or that they need attention. If there's one that I don't call out that you want to talk about, you just let me know, just type up or whatever. So, um, but yeah, so um, the first one um, that I have sort of set aside is, which one, this, uh, blah, blah, blah invoice display issue with multiple instances of one line item. 
And basically all that this is, is we had um, an invoice, an EDI invoice come in <clears throat> and the vendor had referenced to the same line item twice. Like the library ordered, what, what was it? It's, I guess it's in the bug. Um, they ordered five copies total and they put four, co the vendor put four copies on one line and they put one copy on the second line. Um, and so Evergreen knew that they were all there, but it just wasn't displaying both instances of the line item. So the reason I wanted to call this one out is um, Galen had asked, he was like, do we want that? Do we want it to show if there are multiple instances of one line item? Um, so I sort of wanted to like call that out and find out, do we want it to show both instances or is this just like, I don't know, like a vendor quirk that we don't care about? I don't know. So I just wanted to open it up for what you guys think we should do with it. If it doesn't show both instances, would we want Evergreen to be smart enough to merge them into one line on the invoice? Because you want to have all five copies represented on the invoice if they're on the invoice. Because mm -hmm. like it knows all of the, I'm trying to remember what it was, but it knew all of the encumbrances were there. So like me trying to fix it, I was like over encumbering the fund or something. So like, it was like, I couldn't see everything I was working with, I guess. It existed, it just didn't display. And I imagine since it didn't display, you wouldn't be able to actually pay for it, like transfer the money from encumbered to spend. Yeah. I think that's how it came up originally. Um, I'm trying to remember. Because like on our on our invoice like printout or whatever, if there's something with a debit that's not quite right, like it doesn't close right, it'll say like at the bottom. Uh, and so I get like a help desk ticket <laughs> and they'll be like, why does this say this? Um, so I think that was what it was. Because I think that either it should be fine showing two invoice lines with the same line item ID, or it should know to merge them into one. But at this point, I have no reasoning as to why one option would be better. Okay. I, I just, I think it should do one or the other, but I have, yeah. So as long I as it's agree, represented. No, I, I'm leaning toward what they sent is what we should be able to see. Yeah, I would agree with, with, with Mary. I think it's less confusing if it matches right. the paper invoice. I think that makes sense. Okay, cool. Uh, then I will, uh, I will write our judgment on this bug later then, if that sounds cool with everyone. Um, okay, the next one I wanted to call out, um, well, so, like a couple of these because we're going live. Uh, a lot of these are from me. Um, so it is just like little nitpicky stuff. Some of them are. So like uh, the paid, when stuff is paid on a line item, it just wasn't bold. It didn't stand out very much. So I changed it. Um, the streaming in your line items. So in the new interface, when you know it's like popping in the line items, the loading bar was at the bottom of the line items. So like, you're constantly like scrolling down, <laughs> trying to find out if it's done. Um, so I just put it at the top. Um, and um, as far as the CSV thing, I don't know if this is just me. I think it's still not confirmed, I don't believe. So if someone wants to see if you can actually print um, funding source allocations, that'd be good. Um, and then this Angular funds drop down not populating and the one at the bottom, this act providers needs to be more strict. These are the same thing, um, essentially. And basically what it is, is um, in like several places in the new Angular act stuff, it's like the combo box, like the, the field or whatever, uh, where you have a drop down options, it is doing like a search that little boxes. And the search is too broad. 
So like for our providers down here, the search was simply is active. So like it would go out and it would pull out all of the active providers and then it like on the back end like shuffles out the ones you're not supposed to see. Well, in Pines, we have 400 something providers. So A, it was slow and B, like people wouldn't be getting their full list of stuff because it, like the list would just get truncated because it was so many, um, because it was doing like that after after thing shuffle. Um, and same thing with the funds, like people weren't seeing any of their funds because they would fall below the limit of what could display. Um, so it's essentially just the same thing. Um, and so the way that I fixed both of them is just adding an org. So like search for the ones that like, I'm allowed to see and like putting that directly into the, the search. So it, yeah. Um, so they're basically the same thing, but they were really annoying. Um, so those both have a pull request um, and it works on our production. Uh, well, our copy of production data. So. Um, and I assume Tiffany that we're expecting all of those will be available for testing uh, in February with bug squashing. Yes. Uh, I mean, they're they're all pull requested. So um, if they're still pull requested, then then we can throw them up on a server for bug squash. I would like all of those fixes before we do our next upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, like um, I fixed the provider one this morning, um, and I was like, Chris. I know we're supposed to be frozen and not add anything more, but I kind of really need this one. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so, uh, cause you, cause you can't really test it on Concerto, you know, like there's like five mm -hmm. on Concerto. So it's not anything comparable to, to how many funds or providers or whatever on our, or on a production data size. Um, uh oh there's the batch updater which we kind of talked about earlier basically just put it back on the front page instead of having it up in the action menu um which is if you haven't been glued to 310 like i have for the past couple of weeks it looks like this law law like instead of being like right here like front and center it's like up here so like you can add, so now like my, my like refrain is always like the batch updater is a replacer and not an add to. So now we have both the replacer for the batch updater and also we can add, which is cool to have both options. It's just, we use the batch updater all the dang time, like all the time. So I really would prefer it was back up here to sort of lessen the number of clicks, which is basically all that that bug is. And if you think it will affect you in the future, please confirm or not confirm, uh, say you're affected on the bug. Oh yeah, please do. Because yeah, I think like, it's just you and me, Tiffany, right now. <laughs> We're like, it's really important to us. Um, yes, please. Yeah, on any of these, like if, since I'm sort of like skimming through this list, if you like look through these later and you're like, oh yeah, seriously, um, please do add heat or comments or whatever. Um, I have my list here. What was the other one I wanted to tell you about? Um, so this one I had a question about for you guys. Okay, so this is, what is this? Did I already close my server? I did. Um, blah, blah, blah. Uh, oh yeah. So when you go into items, if I don't touch anything, I'm not clicked, I haven't done anything, watch it not watch it not happen. No, it did. Okay. I didn't do anything. And it's like you you changed something. Are you sure you don't want to save? So that seems too sensitive to me. Does that bother anybody else or is that okay to you guys? Does the holdings editor do the same thing? I do not remember. The holdings editor does that if you haven't clicked on save all and, and exit. If you just try closing the tab, it'll object to that. 
So like if you don't touch anything. But if you make if you well if you made it I don't know you know not just I'm saying thinking about it I'm not sure what happens if I don't touch any field and just try closing the tab if I'm getting the message or not. Sorry, I withdraw any remarks because I'm, I'm now unsure. I really don't know any either way. So <laughs> um, let's see. Yes. There's probably a faster way, but you know. Did I do that right? Okay. All right. So we're saying if I touch nothing and try and close the tab. Did I do that right? Is there is there a just leave other than just closing the tab? I don't think so. So this one like you can either close the tab or well let's see what if I what if I tinker? No, oh, it doesn't care. Hmm. I thought it used to care. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm I'm really not sure. So there's not a, there's not a leave other than just closing. So is there any other like um what's the word I'm looking for? Precedent that we can think of? The mark records if you change the tab. Okay. But I feel like that doesn't. All right. Okay, so I did I did make a change though, so. But it, that one definitely doesn't say it if you don't make a change. No. Because mm -mm. I'm just flipping through. Mm -hmm. yeah, I feel like care. those are the only ones I can think of that are kind, kind of similar. Well, let me ask then, does this, oh, what, oh, okay. Does this bother you guys at all? Like to me, it like is very like, you're in Word and it's like, do you want to save your changes? And you're like, oh God, I didn't do anything. Um, so if that doesn't bother you guys, it might just be like a me thing and it's no problem. So well, so if you, you hit, if you hit return at this point and you say confirm, does it actually do anything? Because it doesn't actually <laughs> add that item. No, it doesn't. I mean, I could live with it, but I can see how it would be confusing. Like, I think that's my problem. It feels confusing. Like, you know, like I didn't touch anything. What, what, I, what did I, you know, like what unsaved changes do I have? <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I think it's, it's confusing. Mm -hmm. And like Jennifer, people could live with it, but why should we? Mm -hmm. Right. If um, you didn't do anything, it shouldn't act like you did. So. Yeah. Well, because it makes you go ahead. It makes you like second guess yourself and you're like, oh, did I like change something? If I hit confirm, is it gonna actually do something? Yeah. Like I think it's probably like low priority, you know, like you're it's not breaking anything. It's just kind of confusing, I think. But but I want but like I said, I didn't know if that was a a B thing, or if you know, that's actually like probably not the best. No, I don't. I don't think it's just a you thing, Tiffany. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Could you go okay. back to the Harry Potter record for a second? Yeah. And then, uh, well, go to the uh, item table. Okay. And click on Edit under the barcode. Because I think I've seen it there, but not necessarily in 310 because I haven't been testing it yet. Can we leave this one? Without? Yeah. 
So what happens if you close the tab from the hold or from the items attributes there? Mm. Nothing. Okay. Does it care if we did anything? Aha. So now it knows that we did something. So that's good. And I like, well, that's I like valid. the wording on that one better. Leave as opposed to confirm. Mm. Yeah. Because that one more makes you think that you're going to be taken away without actually making your changes. Whereas confirm just kind of gives you the sense that it's going to do whatever it was, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like there's some action being taken. Are you sure you want to leave? Yeah, like instead of saying just confirm, this could just be leave. Mm -hmm. It would definitely better be better that way. I okay. think it's unnecessary for it to be there at all, but if we have to have it, leave would be better than confirm. Yeah, okay. Okay, cool. Um, okay, all right, I am gonna skip because we have three minutes. Um, so because... Um, is Stephanie still here? Oh, she is. Hey, Stephanie. Yeah. Um, so uh, Stephanie did work on um, <clears throat> this better way to ID funds at warning and stop percentages. Um, and so it looks, I don't have, I don't have it loaded up actually. Um, and it looks really good, right? Like it's got um, like icons that show you um, instead of just like the color um, and then the, the coloring is different. So like the, the stop is more of like a pink color. So I asked, I was like, I don't know anything about this, um, but can it be more red? And Stephanie gave me this awesome um, explanation, which you should definitely read because it's so interesting because I really don't know anything about accessibility. <laughs> um, but uh, so yeah, I wanted to bring this up because uh, for you guys to see it really and see if you guys have any like feedback on it um i think you have your picture and yeah, you, the pictures there and stephanie put it into the chat awesome thank you the alignment is bad on the code pen version but that's okay and tiffany i just looked at that again and i was like you know what that red does not look red <laughs> and maybe it's just that it's like a different time of day and the lighting is different in my office but i'm gonna go lighten up the text on that a little bit so that it is more obviously red it is like a tint of red in there, but it looks black. It's so dark. So I'm going to go lighten it a little bit. We can we can go quite a bit of ways back towards red without violating the, the contrast requirements. So I'll lighten that up. Oh, OK, awesome. What is the... I really like that the whole line is highlighted. Yes, like I am visually... going to. I am going to be nudging the developers a bit towards doing things more like this. Um, they, they, it was tricky to design because they didn't put the warning state on the whole line and I had to sort of like back out and add padding and, and make it crazy to make it work. I'm gonna try to change the way that we do this in the code a little bit so that it, the, the warning goes on like the parent wrapper rather than the text itself, if that makes sense. Um, so that we can do more things like this, where you get a background color and an icon and a text color. Um, because yeah, the color alone is um, an accessibility problem. We've got people who are colorblind who can't distinguish differences when color is the only thing that's being used to convey a difference. So that's why that's there. Yeah, that's awesome. And thank you so much uh, for like the whole explanation that you gave. That was awesome. Oh, sure. I, I feel edu uh, marginally educated. <laughs> 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 but uh, I do. That was awesome. I really appreciate it. Appreciated it. No problem. I am working on a, an accessibility guide for developers. Um, we've got like a partial draft going and I was hoping it would be done by now, but uh, it needs a bit more work. So um, I might talk about it a bit more at new devs next week. Oh, awesome. Very That's good. really exciting. I'm glad y'all are excited about it. I am, but I do front end work, so. 
<laughs> like I'm, maybe I'm weird. <laughs> no, no, that's great. I really, that's really good. And we're so, we're so glad to have you in the community too, because I mean, there's, there's not a ton of people who are super, um, I, I, I don't want to say well-educated, that's not the right word, but like know as much about um, doing things like that. So we're so glad to have you. Oh, that's great to hear. Thank you. I feel welcome. <laughs> Good. Um, okay. So before I do the last couple, um, does anybody have any like discussion or questions for Stephanie on this one or anything about this since we have her? <laughs> Anything else in acquisitions, I can't promise an immediate fix to, but I am looking at all of the UI. Awesome. Everything related to the UI in Evergreen. Okay. All right. Cool. Okay. So last, um, last couple. Um, this one needs some discussion, probably from us. It's basically like uh, the criteria for when your PO should be sent out for EDI orders uh, needs to tighten up. So there's like some discussion down here. Um, and I think it's basically just like, is it okay um, for, uh, it has to be on order uh, status and um, like anything less than 24 hours old or whatever. So, uh, and if there's any other like criteria that you guys think should be required, because basically like old orders were being sent out. Um, and this happened to us a couple years ago and it was like, it was like $40,000 um, for a library and I almost cried <laughs> at work, it was bad. Um, so, but yeah, basically just the question is, is there any other criteria that this needs to be strict about? So that's, that's that one. Um, and last thing, uh, where is it? So I can get you guys out of here. Where is, where is, my, where is my stuff? Do I have this one here? No, I don't have it on there. Um, the other thing was that I did a patch for the year auto filter, which has been a particular thorn in our side um, here at Pines because it, it um it half the year it's wrong um so basically it just it takes out the auto filter on the column and puts it back up in the little selector and it's sticky um so yeah i'm very excited about that i'll tell you guys if it's if it's broken when we go live this weekend <laughs> that's really exciting we want that one too <laughs> um and I think that's it. I think that's all I got. Um, is there anything you guys want to talk about, even though we're four minutes over, or are we good? Kudos to you for fixing the shelving location again. Oh yeah, <laughs> it was the exact same problem as as the funds and um, the providers. So, but yeah. So so if you were having that problem in um, holdings, uh, holdings editor, I think was also having the problem. So. Yeah. Kudos to you, Tiffany, for staying on top of all of these acquisitions bugs like this. This is amazing. Oh, thank you. Hopefully it makes it easier to dig through them for you guys. <laughs> I think it does. I just wanted to add Definitely. that um, the issues with, um, like, I think this came up especially in acquisitions, but things with, uh, features not completely being ported over to Angular and like general quality assurance problems came up in the developers meeting yesterday. And I don't think we completely reached an agreement on what to do about it, but I just wanted to mention that um, it's kind of on everyone's radar. Yeah, thank you for calling that out. Yeah, and thank you. I think Jennifer Pringle, you were the one who, who um, I, I guess made that list or helped on that list. So thank you for that. Yes, yeah. that was an excellent list. We um, we had everybody on support adding to a ticket when we came across things. And then I just summed it all up and pulled some examples because I thought examples would help, uh, you know, give something tangible about where we've seen these different things crop up. 
Um, but I, and I think it came up, you know, came out in the chat in the developer, but I, uh, developer meeting, I, but I do really think, you know, having looked at that list that it's not just a developer issue. Um, it's, you know, a lot of those things on that list are things that anytime any of us are, you know, doing bug squashing or feedback fest or just testing, you know, we need to have those in the back of our heads as well so that we can be like, oh, this interface is missing this, like, or, you know, this interface doesn't scope um, so that things get caught before they end up in Evergreen proper. <laughs> yeah. I think it's like, a, you know, a whole, it's a whole community thing that needs to happen. We've definitely come across issues where things um, weren't totally documented as to the current um, functionality. And then when we change things, it drifts further away from what it needs to be. Yep, definitely seen that kind of thing. And I mean, that ties right into um, to dig. And you know, the work dig is, attempting to do as well. We're all connected. <laughs> yes, Dig has the, the uh, possibly most important yet thankless work. <laughs> Absolutely. And if anybody from here feels the need to uh, join DIG and help with acquisitions documentation or any other documentation, everybody is always welcome. Awesome. All right, well, I'm gonna cut it because we're almost 10 minutes over. So thank you so much for everyone. Thank you, Mary, for your presentation today. I think that's gonna be awesome. And I'm so glad that we have it recorded because I think that'll be really useful um, for people like troubleshooting down the line. So. Um, Thank you, everyone. Our next meeting will be in February, February 8th. So I'll hopefully see you guys then. And I hope you have a great day. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Bye. Tiffany. Bye. Thank you.